Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Sergei Handrikov, and uh, this is Nikita Chomakov. We'd like to tell you about the optimization of a Boost Azure Basic Network server, which uh, we are made. Well, uh, first of all, uh, I'd like uh, to tell you about uh, our company, Yandex. Just a couple of minutes. Well, uh, Yandex uh, is uh, the leading search engine in uh, Russia. Uh, they have about uh, 62 Russian search traffic and uh, they uh, uh, serve about 25 million unique uh, users per day. And we are is a uh, we are uh, six uh, thousand employees. Uh, well, uh, Yandex uh, provides uh, some personal services such as uh, uh, photo hosting, uh, <coughs> cloud storage, and uh, email. Well, we are from email. Uh, Yandex email was built in uh, two thousand two. Uh, we serve about uh, 9 million users uh, per day and we handle about uh, 10, uh, about a uh, hundred of million messages uh, which are sent and received daily. And uh, there are about 20 <coughs> internal services which are passing uh, incoming and outgoing messages uh, uh, such as uh, SMTP server, uh, POP server, uh, IMAP server, uh, web interface server, and so on. So it uh, will be nice to optimize them to for better resource uh, utilization. Well, they made some research and uh, we looked at uh, the different input output models such as synchronous model, asynchronous model and of course coroutine. We tried two types of concurrency. These are thread per IO service and multi-thread per, per IO service. And uh, we also tried uh, different buffers for, IOS, uh, for input and output. Uh, these are the continuous uh, buffer with relocations. This is a standard Azure stream buffer. And uh, the next one is our zero copy buffer, which allows us to receive data without copy it. Well, uh, any question? Okay. Uh, let look, let's look uh, at the models uh, which we had tried. This is uh, the uh, architecture of the synchronous and asynchronous server simulation. Here is a server class which accepts uh, the connection and instantiates the corresponding connection class object. <coughs> has a thread pool. Thread pool provides threads and uh, provides IO service objects. The connection uh, handles uh, the incoming data with help of uh, RFC 2822 parser. This parser is built on uh, the uh, boost spirit. Uh, we used two different types of the stream buffer. This is the Azure stream buffer, and this is our zero copy stream buffer. That's it's pretty simple, I think. Uh, well, uh, this is the configuration of a synchronous input output model. Oops, sorry. I skip the slide. Uh, this is uh, uh, the configuration of synchronous input output model. Well, uh, we tried uh, 
the configuration with uh, thread per connect, uh, where we create uh, a thread for each uh, client connection. And uh, we try to process per connect, where we fork the process per each uh, uh, client connection. Well, uh, our coworker said, well, guys, uh, don't lose your time for this one because it, it's pretty, uh, pretty slow. Well, but we tried. The result of uh, our uh, try, we will see later. Okay, uh, the first uh, asynchronous input output model we called uh, 1N. This is uh, the configuration with single IOS service object and one thread per CPU core. Uh, this configuration uh, is uh, called uh, N to N. Uh, here we have uh, one IR service object per CPU core, and here we have one thread per CPU core, and each thread is bound to the dedicated CPU core. <coughs> well, uh, we tried to eliminate uh, thread switching between uh, CPU cores and uh, maybe uh, to grow the uh, uh, the performance, sorry. Uh, this model is uh, the combination of previous two models. Uh, here we have an IS service object per CPU core, but here we have uh, two threads per IS service. Uh, we made it uh, for the hyper-trading CPU utilization. And uh, we thought uh, that uh, this uh, model will give us the greater performance that, than previous two. Well, and uh, now we have something completely different. This is the coroutine. Uh, this is uh, architecture. It's uh, uh, very similar to previous architecture. Uh, here is uh, the server class. Uh, it contains threads, contains uh, IO service, contains session which is used. Uh, parser with RFC 2822. Oh, well, uh, here are the same uh, two different buffers uh, the ASIO string, a basic string buffer, and uh, our zero copy basic string buffer. Uh, the difference are the next. Uh, the first one is the coroutine do, and the next one is read iterator. Uh, this entity allows us to process data while receiving, while we receiving uh, next uh, part of data. Uh, well, uh, on the, ne the next slide shows how it works. Well, uh, we have some data which already received the part of the data. And uh, of course we have an iterator in the beginning of this data, at the beginning of this data. And now we begin to process the data. Okay. We reached the end of the received data. Now our context will be suspended and uh, wait for the next part of data. Okay, we have next, uh, next part of data. We handle it, we suspend, and now The same way. Okay, uh, we handle uh, full data from client. Uh, well, uh, of course, uh, 
we can uh, handle data and receive data simultaneously. It, it, it's difficult to show uh, <laughs> in uh, this program, in this presentation program. Uh, well, uh, we used uh, we used uh, stackful coroutine. Uh, in this uh, configuration, we uh, uh, used one IO service object and uh, one tray the CPU core. Uh, so uh, we examine three types of, uh, of the program. The first one is uh, the, the uh, Azure Stream Buffer. With help, uh, with using the Azure Stream Buffer. Uh, the second one is uh, using our zero copy buffer with uh, read iterator. And uh, the third one is uh, the Azure Stream Buffer with read iterator. Any question? Oops. <laughs> well, let's see how the zero copy buffer works. Uh, let's look, uh, first of all, let's look uh, like uh, how uh, the ASIO buffer works. Well, uh, we have uh, some memory. The first part of this memory is used by the old data, just uh, received in the past. And uh, the second part is free. Well, here comes uh, a new data to be rewritten, and uh, oops, we have no enough uh, free memory to fit this data. Yes, uh, what should we do? Abort. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> <It's easy. laughs> yes. Expand. <laughs> yes, we, we we can expand. Uh, we can. Uh, okay, we uh, we will. Uh, Reallocate the memory, yes? Okay, we allocate a new part of memory. Uh, we need uh, to copy used memory because we shouldn't uh, lose the data, yes? Yes, that's right. Well, now we can free the previous <coughs> memory chunk and uh, now we can write the data okay and we have some free space the tail well uh, now everybody happy we got data but uh, here is uh, here are the problems uh, the first problem is that uh, the buffer allocates a bigger memory chunk while it owns uh, the old one, which is smaller. Well, uh, here we have a uh, memory overhead. Uh, the next problem is it copies an old data for its re reallocation. Well, uh, here we have uh, the CPU uh, <coughs> overhead. And the last one, the application has to copy data from the buffer before it's used. Uh, because uh, we can modify the buffer if we use a multi-thread program. Well, uh, we need a solution for these problems. Everybody <laughs> knows solutions? Anybody knows solutions? Yes? Um, I actually had a question. So does that uh, new allocation remain around for the lifetime of your application? So it only allocates if it ever has to store more data than it's ever had to store, or does it throw it away at any point and have to start over the allocation? Uh, sorry, one more time, please. Uh, yeah, so my question was, um, does the uh, ASIO buffer basically remain persistent for the lifetime of your application, or does it ever throw away that allocation and have to reallocate? Ah, I see. Uh, you know, uh, in our case, uh, we need to uh, free this memory because uh, we have a very, very different size of incoming data. And uh, we, it's uh, too expensive for us 
holds uh, 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 hold uh, to hold uh, the buffers uh, the size of uh, 40 megabytes. No, it may be good. Well, if we have uh, around uh, uh, around uh, a thousand connections, when we need to hold a server uh, 40 uh, gigabytes, it's it's not good. Sorry? Ring. <coughs> ring buffer. Ring buffer? Uh, ring buffer? A ring buffer. Ah, I see. <laughs> well, <laughs> but you know, uh, we still need to uh, copy data from it. Yeah. Out of it, right? Yes, yes. Uh, can't, can't you just bind uh, the buffer to your socket? <coughs> And when you do the boost as your read, uh, you pass a boost as your buffer, which is actually just a, s a slice to the existing buffer. And then you write directly to this buffer and work on it. And when you finish it, you deallocate it. Okay. What can you say? Ну, это самое слайс буфера передавать в эти не сам буфер, а срез. Mm. And for, 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 what, what is the best benefit? Um, you can reuse that, uh, but as you say, what you don't want to do is uh, you cannot hold the maximum value, but you can hold a reasonable average value. And if ever um, you have a very big uh, request, in mm -hmm. that case you will reallocate, but <coughs> it's actually generally rare. Most of the time, you need just a small buffer, so you can keep that, like I don't know, 60 kilobytes, and you always have it, and that means you will have very low latency, no allocation. It's ready; you can write uh, to it. I, I see, but you know, uh, we still need to copy. Uh, why? Uh, because we don't know. Uh, the the usual flow is that uh, the data is common, and to, uh, we need some parts of it, yes. like some messages. These messages, uh, for example, or usernames and passwords, whatever. This uh, valuable data uh, is not. Uh, uh, its margin is different. We, we cannot. Uh, we cannot uh, assume that uh, it will be on the uh, on the margins of these uh, buffers. Okay, I understand. Uh, you just need a subset of the data. That's yes. It. Yes. And is it we, we don't. Uh, we don't want to copy it. Yes. But could you keep it alive for the duration of the treatment? Sorry. Can you keep? Um, if let's say you have one megabyte of incoming data, mm -hmm. but let's say you just want maybe one hundred bytes, yes. and you keep the one megabyte alive for the duration of the treatment. In usual case, we want uh, one hundred bytes. Then we want uh, one kilobytes. Then we want uh, okay. few kilobytes. <coughs> so it's uh, want to some, uh, somehow to handle it. Yeah, mm -hmm. we can maybe talk about it later, but maybe I have an idea. Yes? So ASI, ASI works in part of scatter and gather. So if you know up front what the distribution of your data is, you can give it different bufferings <laughs> that are owned by different, oh. by different contexts. Oh, well, uh, uh, различные, ну, если мы знаем распределение, да, да то мы можем типа давать, но у нас оно равно, ну, оно не равномерно, наверное. Uh, well, uh, you know, we don't know which uh, size of uh, which data will uh, will come to us. It's uh, it's it's extremely undetermined because uh, we don't know which message will will be. Uh, in, some, in some cases, we know it like you know, IMAP, for example. But in other protocols, we, we don't know beforehand the size of the uh, of the messages that the client want to send us. Okay. So, so kind of backing onto that, you know, you, know, you can't. If, so OSIO doesn't own the data, right? You have to supply the container to it. Um, 
you own, you as the user of the library, you own your own data. You own the memory. And you supply the memory to it for, for it to use. So if you were using Scattergather, um, you, could, you could receive from them, from your user, the vector, the container that contains the Scattergather group. And as more items needed to be added, because the buffer wasn't large enough, you could, you could then add them to the container. The user still owns it all yes. as you return it back. And so there's no additional copies that have occurred because the original data was filled. You needed more data, so you added more to the scatter gather group. Is this how uh, zero code the buffer works? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is our solution. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's go to the next slide. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> we don't want to do, uh, to do relocation, we don't want to make any copy of all data, and we don't want to <laughs> use it. We want to use the data from Buffer directly. <coughs> well, uh, uh, here is some animation. Oops. Uh, we, this state is, uh, looks like uh, a previous uh, for a for the <coughs> Azure Stream Buffer. Uh, okay, here comes the new data. We just add a new memory and the received data in this memory. Uh, but here is the question. Should the user of the buffer handle uh, a list of memory chunks? instead of uh, convenient and useful, for example, vector. It's not easy. It, uh, well, uh, we provide some solution for it. Okay. This is the concept. <laughs> Here uh, we have uh, the uh, memory chunks. We call it fragment. This is uh, the list of the fragments. And we have entity which is called segment. Uh, the segment is the representation of the... Yes? Um, how does this differ from a deck? The standard library mm -hmm, I see. I think. <laughs> Actually, um, we, have a pro uh, we have a problem with ownership of this data. And uh, uh, we would like to keep uh, shared pointers to fragments to track to track uh, the owners. Okay, so uh, we cannot use uh, the regular deck here. Well, uh, okay. Uh, uh, the segment provides uh, the uh, convenient interface uh, for. Uh, uh, for, for, for the data access and uh, uh, f the fragment can be shared between uh, two or more segments. This is important detail. Well, here is uh, the zero copy architecture. Uh, here is the basic fragment. This is the representation of the fragment. Here is uh, the fragment list, which uh, <coughs> contains uh, the shared pointers to the fragment. Uh, here is uh, the segment, and uh, here is the stream buffer, and uh, some other classes with, uh, which help us to access data and store data. Well, uh, let's look closer for each object, or uh, for each class, sorry. Uh, okay, the basic fragment. Uh, this is, uh, this class uh, contains a data. Data is a, oops, it's a pointer <coughs> to the memory chunk, continuous memory chunk, and uh, it contains size of uh, this chunk. It provides uh, uh, the interface uh, to assess data, so begin and end. Uh, it provides interface for size. 
uh, and it provides uh, the uh, constructor and uh, protected uh, method to uh, specify uh, the to set up the uh, memory chunk. Uh, it is important to say that uh, this entity does not own the memory chunk. It only represents it. Uh, here is, yes? So what, what do you need the size member for? Size memory? The size member, so in that previous function there. Um, Oops. 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 Size function? Yeah, there's a size function there. I mean, so how does this differ from just like two iterators or a range or something like that? Oh. You know, this is, uh, this is an abstraction. This is, uh, this is uh, the base uh, class for two next classes. It provides some interface for, for these classes, you know? Uh, uh, the uh, arithmetic with uh, iterators are costly because uh, it's not a continuous uh, memory, okay? It consists of some stripes. Uh, no, no, нет, Никит, имеет в виду про этот самый, про именно в фрагменте. Uh, well, you know, it's uh, just, uh, it's, it, 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 this is just our selection, I think. So, 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 so of course. abstracting, if it's an abstraction? What, what, what is being hidden here? Oh, well, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I'll, uh, I, 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 I'll show it uh, on the next uh, slides, okay? Uh, here is a derived class from uh, the basic fragment. It's it called a basic RAII fragment. And this entity owns the memory. It combines the uh, fragment and the allocator. So it can allocate and deallocate memory. The allocator can be specified with uh, the template parameter and with the constructor parameter. Okay. And here is the next driver class. It's with strange name, <laughs> RAII wrapper fragment. This is the shared reference to the fragment. So we can share it via some RAII uh, class and uh, we use the shared pointer. Well, with help of uh, this uh, class, we can share the fragment between segments. So we still use this interface, but we have no virtual, fu virtual function except the destructor. So the segment, um, is this like a way of saying that, you know, once all the segments go out of scope that access this memory and I can now free it? Is that the idea? Uh, sorry. Sure. So you have this underlying data structure. Yes, yes, yes. You have these segments which are views into it. Yes. I'm wondering if the idea behind that is that if I remove this segment over here, if it deallocates, Mm -hmm. And I see if this chunk of memory is no longer referenced by any other segment, mm -hmm. then it can deallocate that chunk of memory. Yes. Is that the idea? Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thanks. Okay. This is uh, the iterator. Uh, this class helps us to <coughs> use the fragments as uh, as the, the the list of fragments as the continuous memory uh, container, so like vector. This is a random access iterator. iterator. It uh, contains some function to switch between the fragments when iterate through the data. Well, it uh, contains the fragment list reference. 
it contains the iterator to the current fragment and it contains the position in inside the fragment. And uh, okay, uh, this is the basic segment. Uh, segment. Uh, this uh, class provides for us a convenient interface to uh, assess the data. Okay, it provides begin and the begin the end uh, size empty, and it provides the append method. So the append method allow us to append. Uh, one uh, segment to another segment uh, without any copy, of course. Well, we can match this, the segments with uh, the help of uh, the append method. Uh, here is the top level entity basic stream buffer. It uh, implements uh, three, in uh, three interfaces. Uh, uh, the STD stream buff interface with X button, X button and other. It uh, implements uh, the ASIO stream buffer interface and it implements our own interface for zero, uh, for the zero copy access to the memory. Well, Okay, the, 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 we, have, uh, we have a stream buffer with uh, uh, no copy uh, for receiving data. And uh, now, oops, sorry. And now we need to get data from the buffer. Should we use STD iStream for it? No. No? <laughs> Why? <laughs> There's a buffer and ice stream, if I remember correctly. So you're going to do copy without knowing. Mm -hmm. I see. Yes. And uh, we provide our own interface to access data. This is the detach method. Uh, it's, uh, it detached the uh, uh, number of uh, fragments before the iterator. Well, the end iterator of the buffer points to the end of uh, received data. Well, let's let's look how it works. Okay, uh, we have some stream buffer with a number of uh, fragments, and uh, we have the iterator. Well, uh, it's pretty simple. We will split it. Yes. Okay, and now we can return this segment for the client. It, everything, everything is easy, yes? But what should we do when the iterator points somewhere in the middle of the fragment? How do you think? Share it. Yes. <laughs> okay. We detach the first three fragments from the stream buffer, and next we create the array wrapper fragment instance, which is uh, refer which refers to the first part of this fragment. Next step is to create the same reference into the stream buffer. Now we share this fragment and it's alive until these two references are exist. Okay. Let's 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 go to the experiment. Well we used uh, two Computers. Which was uh, connected uh, with two gigabits uh, lines. Uh, uh, 
one of these computers was a client, and one of, and the next one was a server. Well, on server we run uh, different SMTP server models, sim simulations. Sorry, uh, and on client we run uh, the special client uh, program, which uh, provide uh, for us uh, a load very similar to the <coughs> our production load. Do you have any question? Okay. Okay, about uh, some slide about the load. Uh, we used Boost ASIO for uh, input output and uh, they use the next setup. It was uh, 6,000 uh, connections and uh, we provide uh, uh, 9 kilobytes mean message size for each connection. <coughs> so this is a pretty good load for our server. Oops, sorry. Uh, here is uh, the hardware we used. Uh, pretty good CPU with 24 threads and uh, 12 cores. Uh, very big memory. And uh, two Ethernet gigabit interfaces. Uh, the uh, client and the server are identical. Question. Yes. Before I thought you said that <coughs> you ran one thread per processor. Yes. So does that mean uh, 24 threads? Per, 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 per CPU. Uh, ah, per CPU? Per CPU core. Yes. Per CPU core. Uh, in the, uh, in the, uh, it depends on the model because it was uh, uh, 20. You different models. This is just one. So okay. when you say threads here, you're talking hyperthreads, right? Yes, 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 okay. yes, yes. Of course, uh, 12 cores only. Right, and, right. and each one has uh, uh, hyperthreading. Well, this is the software we used. We used Ubuntu, Acer, <coughs> Spirit, Second Spirit, and uh, uh, the GCC 4.9 better to be in the age of technology. <laughs> uh, here are measurements uh, which we made. Uh, from server side, we measure the RAM consumption, the CPU consumption, and the network load. Since we ran only one client, we measure the request per seconds on the client side. And we measured the latency on the client side. Okay, any question? Well, now we can see the results. Well, how do you think? Who's the winner? Who's the winner? Buffer. <laughs> 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 yes. Okay, let's uh, let's look at the results. Okay. <laughs> uh, here is uh, uh, the first uh, uh, the first model, uh, multi-threaded synchronous input output. So well, it's when we create uh, one thread per connection. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and he, uh, here we can uh, we uh, can see what the hit the limit on the Azure stream buffer in the CPU, and uh, uh, the near to hit the network limit with zero copy. Here we have good advantage advantage when they use the zero copy. We have good advantage in request per second. We have good, very good advantage in CPU utilization. 
uh, we cons we have a, a bigger memory conception, but this is because we have more requests. Uh, we have better latency, and we near to hit the network limits. Question. Yes. See, you have a 48 gig memory, and you're only ever using 175 megs of it. Yes. <laughs> 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 well, <laughs> you know, this is only the simulation of uh, the uh, real server, of course, and uh, we uh, tried to understand uh, do, do, do we have any advantage from the zero copy? Oops. And this is multi process synchronous input output. Uh, here we uh, made uh, the process pair connection and we will create a process per connect. Uh, this is uh, may seem uh, not reasonable but um, sometimes it uh, makes sense because um, uh, we are protected from um, memory faults in client uh, in uh, sub processes okay yeah, so if, if this if the server fails, yes, then it's yes. just the it's one process, one client. Problem. Yes. They have a good uh, buttons here. Uh, it is pretty fast. Well, uh, we have uh, more RAM conception than previous, than, than in previous case, but still uh, they have a good advantage from the zero copy. We are near to hit the network limit instead of hit the CPU limit. Of course, we have more CPU consumption. I think it's about, uh, because of uh, the fork, forking process. OK, this is uh, a model one to end uh, with one I uh, service object and uh, uh, the number of thread equals to the number of CPU cores. Uh, in our cases, uh, not CPU cores, uh, CPU threads, sorry. Uh, okay, uh, they have advantage from zero copy in uh, the request per seconds. We have very good advantage in CPU consumption. We have no advantage <laughs> in run consumption. And we have no advantage in latency. But the thing uh, that this is because they reach the network limit. We hit the network linked here. So this is our next model. This is a uh, uh, number of I of services equals to the CPU cores, uh, sorry, CPU threads, and number of uh, th 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 threads equal to CPU threads. And each thread is bound to the, to the core of the CPU. Well, so, we so had. Yes, yes. Do you create a socket on each connection or do you reuse them? We created a socket, but uh, it's really not a problem because uh, we, um, uh, we reuse, uh, we send uh, all data by uh, the same socket. We opened uh, we opened several thousand uh, six, se six, six thousand thousands of uh, sockets. Okay, so and then the we uh, send the messages for the. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we have advantage as a, as a, in previous slide uh, we have advantage in uh, request per seconds. We have advantage with CPU better than in previous slide. Yes, yes, better. Uh, they have uh, worse RAM conception. Uh, okay, uh, here we uh, here is we uh, here is the same uh, thing with uh, latency. We hit the network limit. We just hit the network limit, and we have some collision. It seems like you should try this with the uh, pipe. Yes, yes. Uh, I think uh, we need to. Uh, to uh, review the load, I think, yes. But uh, you know, it's a difficult process to find the proper uh, the proper load. 
because uh, we need uh, to uh, run for each load uh, the uh, the models and it it it, uh, it uh, uh, can we, we, we can uh, we can select uh, carefully the uh, average message size in such a way that uh, any uh, any model would win. Okay. Uh, so we selected uh, the typical case for us. What we see on our servers. Okay. It would be interesting to see which of these, not not the SEO versus the zero copy, but the, which of your I/O models would win if you had a really fat pipe. And like a ten gig card. Yeah, like a ten gig card, and so you weren't running up against the network app, um, limit. <coughs> Ну, было бы интересно что посмотреть на каждую модель, какая из моделей побеждает. Yes. So in your simulation here, are you doing any kind of like disk access? Because I presume that you're doing something with these messages. Uh, no, no, no. The, the, the only parse the message and uh, get, get, get the, the, the headers from there. Uh, we uh, don't do any, uh, any I.O. On the disk, or, or well, well, no, those uh, SMTP. I, I don't know if you say that or not before. We model the SMTP server here, and as a client sends uh, the message by SMTP protocol, uh, the server uh, parses it with a spirit parser, a very simplified but it's a spirit parser, and uh, the workout is parsed by itself. If the message par parsed, it's, uh, we, we think that uh, the server is make its work, okay? So, I get that the result. Where, where they're parsing the messages, but in an actual production server, you, you need to do something yes. besides yeah, 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 yes, uh, yes, of course. To resend to, resend, uh, to the uh, cloud service, uh, which uh, holds it, uh, which stores the data. So it's just sending? out the parsed message out through another network connection somewhere else? Yes. 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 In production, yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, this is uh, the model with a uh, uh, number of uh, IO services equals to the CPU cores, yeah. and uh, each uh, IO service has uh, two threads. <coughs> well, uh, okay. Uh, the, the picture is very similar to the previous. Okay, we can look at this. We have some differences in uh, latency, but it, 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 it is not significant. Uh, well, here we hit network limit too, but we have good advantages in uh, process and the, in the request per seconds. Oh, oh, sorry. Just a quick question here. Uh -huh. Do you have any idea why your RAM usage is about 10 times higher while your request per second is uh, not? The, 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 the thing it, it, it is uh, because we uh, can handle more connections. Because we do not hit the CPU limit. And we process more connections. And we need to allocate much more memory. I think that uh, it's a chain of, uh, of some uh, events. First of all, we're uh, limited by network interface here. Yeah? So the lat latency is high. Okay? Uh, and uh, as latency is high, uh, then uh, more, uh, more um, connections live in one time. Okay? And they, uh, they host more memory. Well, maybe we shouldn't arrange the tests in that way that we, uh, we were limited by the network. We, we, <coughs> we should uh, use less uh, less connections. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay, this is a coroutine, and here we have uh, 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 three cases instead of uh, two. Uh, the first, uh, okay, uh, ASIO buffer, uh, the zero copy buffer with read iterator, and one pass is the ASIO buffer with read iterator. 
So they have good advantage with zero copy. Here we, we utilize CPU <coughs> in, every, in every case. Here we hit the limit of uh, CPU in every case, I think. Uh, well, run consumption is uh, very, uh, very similar, but uh, uh, the high run consumption uh, they have in, in the case so then they use just as a stream buffer. Uh, well, lent, uh, latency, uh, the worst lent latency of uh, if, uh, the ACO plus uh, read iterator and uh, we best network utilization is with zero copy because we near hit to hit limit of the CPU but still not. Well, uh, so coroutine is uh, uh, show us not so good uh, results by latency and request per second, but here we have a big advantage in code because we write uh, very convenient code instead of uh, callback chains in asynchronous input output. We have sequential code. Yes. And uh, do you understand what is one pass? Uh, what we mean by one pass? Uh, one pass buffer. Uh, you only scan it one time, basically. Yes, because uh, in other models we need to uh, uh, first we uh, f find the uh, merchants of the uh, message and then we send it to parser. And uh, in, the, uh, in this way, the input uh, parsed two times. Okay. First we find the, uh, the merchant of the message, and then uh, and second uh, the spirit parser parses. And here we can uh, parse it only once. Well, uh, question. Oh yes. Oops. So, I mean that's a that's a pretty dramatic slide there. Yes. For the cover team guys. <laughs> so, uh, um, so I, I've set up systems doing both. Um, what, what you just described. You know, trying to find an endpoint and then parse, or use the code routine to delay the parse and continue on. Uh, are there other are there other variations going on here? Are you just using the code routine in order to do one pass parsing, or are you using the code routine to handle um, more than just that? Uh. Okay. Uh, 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 actually, we use uh, we use asynchronous uh, internally in Yandex. We use a asynchronous model. But we have many uh, requests that it's too complicated to, uh, to write uh, all these callbacks. And uh, uh, there are requests uh, that uh, we switch to coroutines, okay? Because uh, the, uh, the code bec becomes uh, much uh, simpler. Не, здесь спрашивают, мы используем картину для этого самого, для, только для обработки или для всего, вообще реализации всего там? прием, ну, акцепт и так далее. What's disturbing about this slide, right, is your network utilization. It's horrible <laughs> compared to the other methods, regardless of how hard the coding is. You would expect that you could delay the parse or do one time parsing and still have the same network utilization. Uh, 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 actually, uh, zero copy is one pa uh, here is one pass parser two. Uh, what we mean is ASIO, uh, ASIO buffer is. Uh, Ah, еще раз. Well, uh, okay. Is, uh, is in this case we use the only ASIO buffer with no uh, with no uh, read iterator. Okay. 
we read whole message into the buffer and then it we parse it. Buff stream, okay? Stream buff. And then uh, zero copy is uh, our zero copy with one pass also, okay? And w one pass buffer here is uh, this, 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 is, this is this uh, is the combination of uh, 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 common uh, buffer with read iterator which suspend the curtain at the end of the uh, uh, data part until we get the next data part. We wanted to prove that uh, the advantages here uh, is from uh, is from zero copy and not from uh, one pass. Okay, and uh, we see it on the uh, on the slide. Yes. Um, so my understanding as to understanding of how coroutines work, the extra penalty that you're paying is restoring the complete stack every time you need to have a new event being processed or something like that. And I guess I'm kind of surprised that that one operation, the restoration of a stack every time there's like a new uh, like event, is causing such a huge CPU usage. Do you have any ideas to what? Is there something besides that that's, that's causing the, the CPU spike with core? Uh, we need to investigate this further. Uh, I think that uh, maybe uh, the implementation uh, of coroutines in Boost Azure is not optimal enough. And that is the reason. But we need uh, to further investigate. But I, I, th I still think in a simulation like this that you really want 100% uh, utilization of the CPU because it's just processing messages. And doesn't do any I.O. apart from that. Well, I mean, for their setup, I mean, what we really want is the network. The network's the bottleneck that we want to hit, right? I mean, you can't do any better than 100% network. Sure. Yeah. Well, but you, you, can, you can put a fatter pipe in, so, and then on the previous slides, we would have seen a different bottleneck, hopefully the CPU at some point, because we really want to know how many messages we can process, not, um, not how many uh, messages fit in the pipe, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, so I think that the latency here is really concerning to me um, because the one pass latency doubles essentially the the other ones, while everything else is fairly consistent except the zero copy has better performance at the same CPU load. So. Um, it's interesting that all of them pegged the CPU in this case. So this, um, I, for me, this chart uh, is more descriptive of what's going on than the previous ones where the pipe was filled and okay, so we know that 27,000 messages per second can fit in the pipe, but we don't really know anything else. Mm -hmm. I see. Well, here we actually know how many get processed by the CPU. Okay. Uh, well, uh, actually, uh, we have uh, uh, this uh, uh, all this software on the GitHub, and uh, I think uh, everybody uh, can. Uh, 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 take out uh, the project and try it uh, to uh, make some research because uh, okay we have some time limits yes. <laughs> we, we need to do the production <laughs> uh, some production uh, work uh, okay we, we tried to say uh, to, 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 to make some research uh, and this is uh, the of course result it, 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 it's not ideal of course of course it's not ideal because uh, there, there, there are many, uh, many ways to improve it, and uh, w w w that's why we are here. We just want to show our research and uh, to, uh, to get uh, more ideas how to improve it.
how, how, how to make it better. Yes? Um, so I, I guess I probably wasn't um, understanding it. Is this using um, Chris's coroutine concept in OSEO, or is this using coroutine from like boost coroutine? Uh, this is a coroutine from ASIO, yes? Yes, from ASIO, stakeful coroutine. But uh, it's the same, uh, the, ASIO the ASIO uses uh, boost coroutines. Okay. <coughs> I mean, uh, I mean st stackful coroutines. Because we, we needed to, uh, to you, uh, to you, um, we needed for boost spirit parser. I don't know how to use uh, boost spirit uh, with uh, stackless coroutines. Uh, any question for, for the slide, or we'll go to next? Okay, let's go to to the next slide. Okay, we have <laughs> this uh, the recap advantages. Uh, we have uh, request per second advantage. We have uh, latency advantage in a case uh, when we are to, uh, didn't uh, reach the uh, network limit. Uh, and we have great advantage in CPU utilization because we don't need copy data. Uh, well, and uh, w what is the next? Uh, we would like to see the, uh, the implementation of the copy stream buffer in the boost A0. Our implementation, uh, uh, we think, uh, uh, is far from ideal, of course. Uh, there are many places to improve it. And uh, we we just present an, <laughs> an idea and some uh, some p proofs uh, that idea is works uh, works good. What do you think of most Azure buffer lists, which okay. is uh, a, a list of uh, slices that you can iterate on, <laughs> like what you did? <laughs> Maybe the. Would you like to have shared on the show? Okay. Yes, you can. Um, if you use a list of share pointers mm -hmm. that you make sure they are alive for the duration of your treatment mm -hmm. and you just use a list of uh, boost as your buffers mm -hmm. which are not owning the data mm -hmm. it works that's what we did mm. well uh, it's similar but uh, uh, we would like to detach uh, some slices yes. okay, and we can uh, do it with okay I understand Well, this is uh, our GitHub repository. So, done his take, explore record, modify it, and uh, maybe uh, we together find the best solution for it. And, uh, uh what, what is strange for me is that uh, we could not detect uh, the benefit of. Um, the N to, to N model when we uh, set affinity and uh, use um, e EO servers per, uh, per CPU core. Okay. Uh, in theory, the, uh, it should be the benefit, but we couldn't detect it. If you do the same test with, with a double number of network cards, maybe you'll see difference. Sorry? Make, we make the same test with Big, uh, more network cards or 10 gig ah, cards. I see, I see, see uh, I see. If we uh, do not ha hit the uh, network <laughs> limits, we will see and the and difference. Okay. Try it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> to see the difference, you need to create one connection by client and close it, and then you will see the difference. Yes, uh, that's fine. Because um, in your case, I'm afraid your the operating system is multiplexing uh, the different connection into one. A uh, big transfer, so you might not hit uh, the right parts of the uh, different uh, IO stacks of the kernel. Awesome. There is a lot of um, you. If you really, really want to test uh, how a server is uh, is doing, you need uh, physical different clients connecting, and then you will also test your network infrastructure. But that's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but if you do that, then you are one hundred percent certain that there's not going to be some evil. System, a project system optimization behind your back. But 
I guess it is, it is possible. Yeah. Well, uh, we have uh, about uh, 20 minutes. Uh, do you have any questions? Because the presentation is over now. <laughs> Thank you very much.